In this video I'll demonstrate the construction of the canard wing for the Ainsley Peace Drone. This can be constructed either in the 7 inch nominal which ends up being finished at about 7.5 inches or the 5 inch nominal which ends up being about 5.5 inches finished cord depending on the finishing technique for the trailing edge. The 7 inch wing cord for the canard and the main wing for the Ainsley Peace Drone is best for uh, heavier airplanes and longer duration uh, flights for the same battery pack size, whereas the 5 inch uh, canard and main wing is better for a little bit more nimble aircraft for maneuverability. Like all experimental airlines aircraft designs, the Ainsley Peace Drone uses Adams uh, ready board foam board, aka Dollar Tree foam board, and colored packing tape. I like to get mine from tapebrothers.com. Please see my video on tape covering the foam board. Then see the arm and wing construction video which details the paper removal step the bending technique, the feathering of the trailing edge, the laying down of the formers with or without a channel for a spar, and in the canard it does not need this channel, and then the joining of the trailing edge. In addition to the colored packing tape and the ready board, you'll need a measuring implement, a straight edge for making precision straight cuts, which may also be your measuring device, a hot glue, cutting implement, I like an ordinary utility knife with new blades, and some sort of rigid uh, piece of wood, or this is angle aluminum, with which to push down as you apply the glue joints to the wing formers and to the trailing edge. To start, construct your arm and wing, either a 5 or 7 inch cord, as per the standard technique, using either the standard uh, layered former technique, using 2 or 3, uh, depending on whether it's a 5 or 7 inch cord, or you can use the flight test sort of modified uh, vertically oriented spar structures. Here I've used four, here I've used two. Either is adequate or in some cases a hybrid of the two if you need a channel for the spar of the main wing which you actually don't need for the canard. I found the canard is a very low stress part of this plane. There's really no wrong way to do this whichever technique you're comfortable with. It doesn't have any control surfaces. It's not subjected to very severe flight forces. Uh, therefore uh, it's the, any construction technique is likely to hold up well during flight. One recommended approach for getting into building the main wing and the canard for the Ainsley Peace Drone is to actually build three identical wings, leaving at least one and a half inches of potential control surface for the five inch cord and two or more inches for the seven inch uh, wing cord, and then mate them together with uh, your spar, which I recommend the carbon fiber aero shaft or equivalent carbon fiber tube, and then see which one's made up the best. Let those be your main wing and then allocate the remaining one to be your canard. For example, these two don't come together quite perfectly, so I'll try a different combination. These two match up perfectly, so this will be my main wing, and the third one will be the canard. Now that you've designated which of your wings will be the canard, it's time to remove this uh, potential trailing edge, which will become the elevons in the main wing. You'll see that during the native construction, it in effect creates a, a downgoing elevator, which in a canard it would create an upgoing force. So the goal here is to remove enough of this trailing edge to present a flat lower surface parallel with, coplanar with, the lower surface of the wing. So in effect, the most streamlined way to do this would be to slice off that bit of excess material in this configuration so it tapers down to nothing. In this example, I've done just that. I've cut the trailing edge a half an inch rearward of the actual joint here, removed the paper from this section right up to that joint, sanded it down to a taper and then applied tape in the kissing tape technique where the upper surface tape and the lower surface tape adhesives meet at this trailing edge. This provides a razor sharp trailing edge, very aerodynamic, but it always of course presents that corner which is prone to damage in handling. In this example I've simply cut off the trailing edge material one inch rearward of the joint, just pinched it down like this to taper it slightly and then simply applied vinyl tape starting at the top surface around to the bottom. This provides a, a durable uh, surface. It's very easily done. Vinyl tape is a little bit flexible so you can work it into crevices and irregularities and it works quite well. Not quite as aerodynamic uh, but noticeably more durable in transport and handling. Now that you've got your canard airfoil completely formed, the trailing edge finished, it's time to cap the wing tips. Now it certainly will fly perfectly fine without caps, however in transit 
landing handling of this paper will always uh, tend to peel up and especially if there's any moisture in your environment it will dramatically accelerate that peeling up. One easy way to do this is to use depapered foam board or Depron and just cut out a piece that's airfoil shaped like this. If you use foam board I recommend removing the paper as not to present any more paper on the wing tip that can peel off and then just place the wing uh, down on that trace around it with a pen cut it out with a sharp knife use a little sandpaper to get it to conform perfectly with the wing tip and then glue it onto the wing tip with hot glue CA epoxy or whatever you like to use and it's nice and smooth you can put additional tape over this or just leave it exposed probably the simplest way is just to use a piece of tape either packing tape or vinyl tape applied to the wing tip like this with scallop uh, relief cuts cut along the curved area so that's from here to here and then fold these down sequentially rear to front so that each successive flap overlaps the last one. This does nothing to add to the durability but it certainly does protect the paper and uh, tape underneath which is the part that's susceptible to peeling up especially when exposed to moisture. In my preferred version the canard as well as the main wing are held down by rubber bands. I use two rubber bands per side on the canard and this provides a rigid attachment but it allows for a little bit of wiggle room if you hit something on landing it can move out of the way or if it's a dramatic crash actually the canard can pop off forward but it's necessary to reinforce the leading edge of the canard wing most of the rubber band abuse occurs here at the trailing edge you can see it's very thin and it will tend to create a notch and an unprotected trailing edge in short order with use so what I like to do is to take a, an empty gift card or I've actually bought a large batch of these uh, blank ID cards for very cheap, about 20 cents each. And this is simply folded over the rear of the trailing edge like this, in a shape like that, and glued or two-sided taped on. Optionally, this can be covered with additional packing tape or even better vinyl tape. On the leading edge, it's a little trickier to fold. Uh, subject to a less abuse, the leading edge will nonetheless still um, gradually develop a, a notch and some damage along the leading edge. So I do recommend applying either a carefully curved gift card around the front edge, a more gentle radius than this one, or you can actually get by with just one that's slightly bent along the upper surface of the leading edge as long as the rubber band departs the wing at the point that it's touching the plastic and doesn't loop over bare foam like this. Another way to do it is to take those same folded gift cards, don't attach them to the canard wing, and just apply them when you assemble the plane at the field, one at the leading edge bearing the load of the rubber bands there, and one at the trailing edge folded over bearing the load there. This is just one more piece to keep track of, uh, but it's easy to replace. And finally mounting the canard wing goes like this. In my preferred construction technique I use two lengthwise carbon arrow shafts which have captive on the canard four rubber bands around which emerge from the forward hatch like this. I take two, put them over the tie down pegs in the front, laid flat, and this provides a nice uh, frictiony surface to hold the canard in place during flight, but of course permits it to move out of the way if you have a rough landing or strike something upon landing or takeoff. I recommend indexing marks at the center measured from the tips. A uh, marker or a piece of tape will do front and rear. Then take two more rubber bands straight ahead, no need to cross because crossing them will only tend to pull these together. And there's two per side, nice and flat. I personally like to maintain a spare on each side in case a rubber band should break you'll have another one that you can pull over like that. So that concludes the construction technique video on the Ainsley Peace Drone Canard Wing.